Hi everyone, welcome to the second part of the tutorial on Somewhere Over the Rainbow in the version of Tommy Emmanuel. This lesson is made up out of multiple parts, only the first two or three parts will be released here on YouTube. For full access and loads of extras, please check out my Patreon page. If you need the tab or the notation file, then click the music notes link down below in the description. After the very complex intro, this part will be a welcome change of pace for most. No special techniques, no breakneck tempo, things are a lot more doable in this section. I start the lesson once more by showing you the chord progression first. This is because Tommy plays this song very freely, but underneath he does stick to the same chord sequence every time. Memorizing this sequence before tackling the arrangement will make things a lot easier. After that, I present you with the most basic version possible, only adding the melody on top of that chord sequence. And after that, I show you the first verse exactly like Tommy plays it. Okay, so straight into the first verse. No time to waste. I can feel you are all very eager to get to work on this one. Uh, I'm still using a thumb pick uh, as Tommy does throughout the whole song. Guitar is still in standard tuning, but you won't actually see that many sections in this part of the tune that actually need a thumb pick. So if you decided to skip all the harmonics in the intro part, then you can leave out the thumb pick if you want. This section sounds perfectly fine without one. One of the most uh, often asked questions on the channel or on the Patreon page uh, is how do I go about memorizing these kinds of tunes? Uh, and this is a, a particularly good question when it comes to Somewhere Over the Rainbow because Tommy plays the next sections completely free time. There isn't really a steady beat to keep to and Tommy sometimes stretches one bar and shortens the other and he plays around with the timing all the way through the tune. Uh, the very best thing you can do to give yourself a head start uh, when learning this tune is memorize the chord sequence first. Uh, and it's not uh, that long of a sequence, it's only eight bars. Uh, I'm going to go over it uh, now, in time, uh, but remember that when you play through the rest of the arrangement, Tommy stretches and compresses the time all the way through. But we start out with an A chord. Uh, when I discuss the chord sequence, I'm going to stick mostly to the chord voicings that Tommy uses to play the song with. He does play quite a few variations, but there are also a lot of chords that he plays in the exact same manner each and every time. Starts out with an A chord, just a bar across the second fret, D string, G string, B string. That's the first chord. Then to an F sharp minor seventh bar across all six strings on the second fret, adding the ring finger on the fourth fret of the A string. And Tommy adds in the pinky on the fifth fret of the high E string as the melody note. So A chord, F sharp minor seven. And then to C-sharp minor 7, bar across 5 strings, from the E string to the A string, on the 5th fret, adding in the ring finger on the 4th fret of the D string, middle finger 5th fret of the B string. Then you shift up that bar one more fret to the 5th fret, you scale it down to only 4 strings, from the D string to the high E string, and you add in the middle finger on the 6th fret, and you add in an open A bass string. This is an A dominant seventh chord. You would probably mostly play that like this most of the time, but Tommy sticks to the open A string, so we just remove the bar across all six strings and we remove the ring finger, giving you an open A string and then fifth fret, sixth fret, fifth fret, fifth fret. Timing, first two chords are two beats. One, two, three, four, and this one is three beats. One, two, three, four. That A dominant seventh chord is only on the fourth beat. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Then going for a D chord, but shaped like a C chord. So instead of playing the C chord like this, you replace the fingers. So you get the index finger open and you shift it up two frets and add in a little bar behind that chord shape. So you get pinky fifth fret 
on the A string, ring finger, fourth fret on the D string, then a small bar across two or across three strings, sorry, on the second fret, and you add in the middle finger on the third fret of the B string. So just like a C chord, two frets up. So that's the next chord, and then we move to a D sharp diminished chord, index finger, first fret on the D string, ring finger, second fret on the G string, middle finger, first fret on the B string, pinky, second fret on the high E string. And then from there on, we go to an A major, uh, major ninth chord, not major seventh, but major ninth, which almost looks like an E chord, open A string, middle finger, second fret on the D string, index finger, first fret on the G string, and then two open strings on top of that. Back to back. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. And then following that up is an E minor ninth chord. Tommy plays a voicing that almost looks like a B minor chord. Index finger, second fret on the A string. Ring finger, fourth fret on the D string open G string, so those two will clash a little bit, so only a semitone apart, F sharp and G, then adding in the middle finger on the third fret of the B string, and you add in a low open E string and a high open E string, which gives you an E minor ninth sound. Then switching to an A dominant seventh chord again, in a bit of a special uh, voicing this time. Open A string, ring finger fifth fret on the D string, pinky sixth fret on the G string, index finger third fret on the B string, and you also need that open E string every now and then. This chord is actually never played as a chord, meaning plucking all the notes at the same time. This one is always arpeggiated. So always played separately instead of just one big block of notes. Let's uh, go over it up to that point. A, F sharp minor, C sharp minor, two, three, A dominant seventh, D, D sharp diminished, A major ninth, and then E minor ninth, A dominant seventh, and then we move to the last section of the tune, a D shape, very much like the, the same one you played before, but this time with an F sharp in the bass. So only ring finger, fourth fret, index finger, second fret, middle finger, third fret, and adding in the thumb over the side of the neck on the first fret. If the thumb is too difficult, then just play a full bar across all six strings, but make sure you do pluck the right strings. D over F sharp. You drop down the thumb one fret, the whole fretting hand sort of follows along, and you shift over the ring finger to the third fret at the same time. So from D, shifting down to the first fret with the thumb, third fret with the index finger, uh, with the ring finger, and then middle finger second fret, pinky third fret, giving you a D minor chord with an F in the bass. So from D to D minor, also possible playing both of these chords with a bar, so the first chord with a bar, D over F sharp, to D minor, is then played like this, index finger on the low E first fret, and ring finger, middle finger, pinky on the rest of the chord, so. And then an A chord with a low E in the bass. So Tommy doesn't go back to the second, uh, to the second string, to the A string, but he sticks to the low E string while playing another A triad on top. All the chords up to that point. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's the arpeggio. One, two, three, four, one. In this next section, things become a bit more complicated. Tommy adds in a lot of chords in, in just a few bars uh, time. I'm going to go over them really slowly. So we end up a 
that A chord with the E down below in the bass. And then we go for an F sharp dominant seventh chord. Thumb over the side of the neck, index finger second fret, ring finger third fret, middle finger second fret on, sorry, D string, the G string and the B string while adding in the thumb over the side of the neck on the second fret. Again, you could use a bar as well, playing it like this. Tommy always goes for the thumb down below. So A over E to F sharp, dominant seventh, to C ninth, middle finger third fret, index finger second fret, ring finger pinky third fret on the A string, second fret on the D string, third fret on both the G string and B string. So one, two, three, four. Both of those chords are uh, played really quickly uh, back to back with each other. So one, two, three, four, then to a B dominant seventh chord, one you would usually play like this, but Tommy goes for an F sharp down below in the bass, giving you middle finger second fret on the low E string, index finger first fret on the D string, ring finger second fret on the G string, and an open B string. From that uh, A over E chord, one, two, three, four, one, two. Tommy drops down to what I think is supposed to be an F diminished chord. And we drop down to the first fret. Tommy often uses the thumb over the side of the neck on the first fret, on the low E string, adding in the index finger on the first fret of the G string. I think this is basically meant as an F diminished chord, because we're, but because we're so close to the nut, it's not possible to play the full chord voicing. So Tommy just plays two notes, and because you're only playing two notes, there are plenty of alternatives to swap out the thumb with, for instance, the index finger and the middle finger, or the middle finger and the ring finger. So whatever works for you here, anything goes. A over E, F sharp, C ninth, B dominant seventh over F sharp, F diminished, E, to A. Then Tommy heads back to an E chord, and this is usually where he plays the, the most uh, intricate fills and lots of playing around with uh, the fifth degree, the ninth degree. Most of the time this will turn out as an altered chord, but it's centered around an E dominant seventh chord most of the time. Um, that is the full chord section. Um, so let me go over it all the way, back to back, all the way from the beginning to the end, and make sure you memorize this in full. This is what the melody is built around, uh, and I'm going to show you in just a second that if I just add a few fingers, you can already recognize the whole song just by playing these chord shapes. So from the beginning. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, four. That's the whole chord sequence, packed together in eight bars and played in a steady tempo, which is not something you will be doing throughout Tommy's arrangement. And now I'm just going to add in a few simple melody notes and you will instantly recognize the melody and you will see that you can play the whole melody without actually moving too much of these chord shapes around. And then after that, we will go through each verse step by step, adding in all the different fills that Tommy likes to do when he goes through the very same chord progression. So we start out first bar and we play the A chord, but we stop on the G string. We don't add in the notes on the B string or the E string. That's your first melody note on the A chord. Then to F sharp minor, we add in the pinky on the fifth fret. There's your second melody note. To C sharp, melody note is on the top E string. Second melody note is on the middle finger, B string, and we add in the pinky on the seventh fret of the B string for the third melody note. And you end back up on the high E string, just still holding down the bar. One, two, three, 
four, one, two, three, and then we shift to the A dominant chord. And the melody note, again, is just the note on the top E string holding down the bar at the fifth fret. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Heading to that D chord, and again, in this first verse, we're not including any of the top notes. We play again the A note on the G string, and we don't use the B string nor the E string. We shift to the D sharp diminished chord, and the melody note is again on the top E string, played with the pinky. So. And on that A major ninth chord, we just play the full chord, and again, your melody note is the top E string. From the beginning, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Now in this next section on the E chord and the A dominant seventh chord, there is no melody. This is basically just a chord fill. And then we head into the D chord. Melody note is on the top string, on the B string, third fret. Shift down to the D minor chord. Melody note is now in the pinky, but it's the same note, third fret on the B string. So one, two, three, four. Moving to the A chord, the bar again on the B string, second fret, holding down with the bar, that's the melody note. Have to lift the bar in this case. Tommy sometimes also likes to play it with three fingers. If you use the bar, it's melody note, second fret on the B string, melody note, second fret on the G string, just holding down the bar and then lifting the bar for an open B string. And you do have to lift that bar because now we're going for that F sharp uh, dominant seventh chord and again the melody note is just the top of the chord second fret on the b string let me play everything up to that point one two three four 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 one Again, if we move to the C ninth chord now, again, the melody is just in the chord, top note of the chord, pinky on the third fret. Moving down to the B dominant seventh chord, open B string is the melody note now. F diminished, like I said, first fret on the G string and you just add in the second fret with the middle finger or if you're playing it without the thumb with the ring finger or even the pinky whatever works for you E chord melody note is the open B string you add in the pinky on the second fret of the B string and you end back up on the second fret of the G string when playing the A chord that's the full melody and basically almost all of it is buried somewhere in, in those chord shapes. So you don't have to add in too many fingers. Tommy does that when playing all of those fills, but the, the, the core basic uh, melody and, and the, the, the chord sequence of this song isn't that difficult. So let me play through it all the way to the end uh, in, in this very simplified version. And then we are going to start adding in all of those fills that Tommy likes to do. Here we go. So all the way from the start of the A chord. That 
is what happens. The full chord sequence with the melody added on top. And hopefully you can see there's not that much complicated stuff going on in here. If you're used to playing bar chords, then most of this is pretty straightforward. Up until now, I have uh, I've tried to stick to uh, as much as possible to uh, a steady tempo, uh, which makes a few parts a bit more difficult. Um, now, Tommy never does this when he plays through the song. He plays this in a very, very much a free time fashion, stretching one bar, making the other one a little bit shorter. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play through the first verse and try to get as close to Tommy's timing and adding in the first few fills that he likes to do uh, so you can start adding in the sections you like. The good news is because you know the basic version using the melody and the chords together, you can always scale it back. Whenever I go through a certain section that seems too difficult, you can always step back and move back more towards the, uh, the more basic version uh, in order to skip certain parts that might be too difficult for you now. Uh, and maybe you can come back later and add them in when you feel that your technique is up to it. Now, first, all the way through that first verse, as close as possible to what Tommy is doing. next verse. So as you can see, most of the chord shapes we looked at in the basic version are here again, but Tommy plays around with it. I'm going to go over it note by note, how I transcribed it, but don't feel obliged to learn it note by note either. So I'm going to point out certain arpeggiated notes. If you arpeggiate a different string, so it probably will sound just as good as what is happening here. Tommy starts by just playing a really simple arpeggio. And the only thing you can do wrong here is play that first A bass note too loud. If you really hit that one hard, it will be impossible to get that melody note on the G string on top of that. That's what you should get. Softly, softly, loud. That note should ring out the loudest. And then he adds in the pinky first melody note before adding in the rest of the chord. Up to now, we always played the melody and the chord at the same time. Tommy first plays the melody, bass note, A string, and a small chord just holding down the F sharp minor seven bar. Basically the exact same thing we played before, we're only adding in an arpeggiated note on the D string. And maybe instead of just playing the melody note on top, Tommy is sort of rolling across the chord, playing after the thumb the G string, B string and E string, and he sort of rolls the, the, the wrist to roll the fingers off the string, so not just all the strings together, but so you try to separate that lightly. It's not a finger movement, it's a rolling movement with the wrist. You roll the palm of your hand away from the strings. The first time around he plays a hammer on, the second time around he just picks the note, so it doesn't really make that much of a difference. First, again, the same rolling movement. A string, G string, B string, and E string, and then he plays the fifth fret on the D string separately. Just an arpeggio across that chord shape, so the first two notes are together, the index finger and the pinky, G string and A string at the same time. And then just an arpeggio going up, D string, G string, B string. Then when he hits, when he heads over to the open E string on top, he lets go of everything and switches to the uh, D sharp minor shape straight away. 
with a small hammer on to the second fret. So, so first hammer on with the pinky and then adding in the rest of the chord, giving you just a little bit more time to play that D sharp diminished shape. And then he plucks D string, G string, and then with the index finger and middle finger, he shifts the pinky up to the third fret, plucks the B string and the E string at the same time, and slides down to the second fret straight away. And back to an open E string, heading into the next chord. First, let me play this small section together. So starting from the D chord, A bit slower even, quite a lot going on there. Heading into the A major ninth chord. Let me play those first four bars back to back. These are four bars, but we are stretching the time all the way through. So one bar is a bit shorter, the other one is a bit longer. You can basically take your time as much as you want to play certain sections that you find difficult. Here we go, starting from the A chord. So we end up in the A major ninth chord and we just arpeggiate all the way to the top. What I'm using is thumb pick, thumb pick and then index finger, middle finger, ring finger. But I think Tommy actually picks this all the way down with the thumb pick. He's, he's just he's a natural using the thumb pick as a flat pick as well. I tend to stick to fingers just a little bit more because I'm a bit more uh, familiar with that. Then open B string, hammer on to the second fret and sliding up to the third fret, heading into that E minor uh, ninth chord. Now the first time around, Tommy doesn't play the low E string. He sticks to the B string as the bass note and he plays the open G string at the same time. And then just arpeggiates the rest of the chord. So B string, hammering on, sliding to the third fret and then A string and G string at the same time, second fret and open string and then just the arpeggio going across all strings, meaning all strings we're holding down here. So D string, G string, B string. To the A dominant uh, seventh voicing we talked about before. And like I told you already, this one is always arpeggiated. It's never played just as one big block. So from the A major ninth chord, This is being kept really simple. D chord, bass note on the D string. D minor chord, bass note on the D string. And then Tommy pulls forward that low E bass note by one eighth note. So one, two, three, four, one. And that is where he starts the melody in the next part. So one time, all the way up to this point, uh, starting from the A major uh, ninth chord. talked about before, putting down the bar, second fret on the B string and then just arpeggiating and releasing the uh, bar right before heading into that F sharp chord. Now the next section going through the F sharp chord, the C ninth chord, the B dominant chord, the F diminished chord and ending up on the E chord, that to me is in terms of timing the most tricky section you will encounter in the entire song. Because Tommy adds in a lot of arpeggios, he's shifting back and forth with the timing all the way through. I think the best method to use here is to try and time out the melody as close to the original as possible and, and try to add in all of those arpeggios in between there while keeping the melody moving in the right tempo. 
Uh, you'll see what I mean in a second. It's, it, this is just tricky in terms of how much is happening uh, at a really short uh, period of time. So we end up on that A over E chord. First the melody note, and then again the bass note, and the rest of the chord. So, three, four. So that is uh, the first part of that tricky section. Hammering on to the second fret. Bass note, chord, melody note, bass note, and a quick arpeggio. And the timing of this is really hard to explain and really hard to notate as well. Uh, in, in, in music notation, I found it really difficult uh, to make the transcription for this one. So uh, I'm going to try and explain it as uh, to the best of my abilities. So three, four. So just taking that F sharp and that C chord apart is, this happens on the third beat, three and, which is basically just a two sixteenth notes and one eighth note. One and two and three and. If you play that quicker, you get one and two and three and four. The, the last part, the C chord, is again playing each and every note separately. First the melody note on the beat. Three, four, and... Which is basically all 16 notes. Three, and... First the melody note, and then arpeggiating each and every other chord tone, starting from the A string. B string, A string, G string, G string. Those two chords back to back. One, and two, and three, and four, and... One more time, maybe a bit slower even. One, and two, and three, and four, and... And then we move down to the B dominant seven chord with the F sharp in the bass, and the sort of twisting timing continues in this bar as well, and then we're out of the woods. So this is the second bar. And again, we start with the melody note first, then the bass note, and we arpeggiate up, going through the E string, D string, and G string, sort of a triplet feel. And we end that lick by shifting the bass note to the first fret, so, and you get that triplet feel in that arpeggio. dominant 7th chord, I'm not playing the middle finger right now, so you have open E string, 2nd fret, open the E string, 1st fret, everything else is open. And then Tommy plays a quick hammer on and pull off lick, open B string, hammer on to the 2nd fret, C sharp, hammer on to the 3rd fret, D natural, and pull back off to the 2nd fret. Playing the second fret on the G string to round things out with, with a small bar uh, across, in this case, across five strings. You don't need the low E string. I'm going to uh, explain in a second why you need that bar. First, I'm going to play that really tricky timing section all the way through, starting from uh, the A chord with the E in the bass. Three, four. Don't try to really count things out in this bar. Tommy is shifting stuff all around all through this section and it's really hard to keep time. So try to space in those notes as you think they should sound, but always try to keep the melody in tempo. Not easy, this little section. If it's too hard, skip back to the basic section and play the fills everywhere else in the song. So you end up on that bar, second fret, across five strings, you add in the pinky on the fifth fret on the low E string, and you are going to hammer on from the second fret to the fourth fret using the ring finger. And furthermore, just play a full arpeggio, not including the high E string. 
then as soon as you get back on the D string, Tommy's pulling off a trick using the same fingering each and every time. Middle finger, fourth fret on the D string, index finger, third fret on the G string, pinky, fifth fret on the B string. And Tommy is going to move up this voicing two frets each time. So then if you, uh, I tend to aim this uh, looking at the middle finger from the fourth fret to the sixth fret to the eighth fret to the tenth fret. If you're accustomed to, uh, to navigating uh, position changes using the index finger, then it's third fret, fifth fret, seventh fret, ninth fret. And he's basically playing what I just did, always rolling through that little chord shape. Just going up, it's, it's more of an effect than actually a, a, a separate technique for each finger. Really quickly. Not really thinking that much about rhythm or tempo, just a quick flurry going up the neck. And then when he ends up all the way at the top, index finger, 12th fret on the D string, a small bar across three strings on the 13th fret, adding in the pinky on the 15th fret. Releasing to the bar at the 13th fret. And then a harmonic at the 12th fret. Natural harmonic 12th fret on the high E string. Releasing to the bar. And then harmonic at the 12th fret, high E string, rounding out the first verse. There is one thing that is a bit tricky in this section, which is moving up all the way in the same chord shape and then switching to the other chord shape. And I always bump into the side of the guitar when I try to get that pinky on the 15th fret. If you struggle with this, getting that transition clean, then you can play an open E string right before switching to that next chord because everything we're playing in this last section revolves around an E altered chord, an E dominant altered chord. So you could play this as well, going up, open E string giving you just a little bit more time to go for that last chord. I always just hit the side of the guitar struggling to get that, that final chord right and playing the open E string just gives me a little bit of extra time. Make sure to mute the bass string as you play that high harmonic because we're then transitioning into the next verse and that low E bass note kind of ruins the effect of the transition. So uh, one more time, that ending section starting from the A chord with the hammer on. Three, four. Uh, then the full section starting from the D over F sharp chord, basically the second half of the melody. Here we go. of the next verse already. That was the full first verse, basically more or less the way Tommy plays it. Let me try and play through this whole thing really slowly, one more time. Here we go, from the top. After that is stuff for the next part of the tutorial. Have fun getting through all of this, start with the basic version, work in the fills you like and I'll see you again for the second verse as well as the bridge in part 3 of the video. <laughs>